subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi everyone, welcome to Test Prep Training. In this video you will learn about the top interview questions for Juniper Service Provider Routing and Switching Specialist. So let's get started. Question number 1. Assume your connecting device is via a cable to form a connection. What is the maximum distance that two computers may travel using this method? Is there any way to increase this limit in JN0362? Your answer is. The length of cable used to connect two computers in a network is generally limited to 100 meters. Using switches and signal repeaters, this limit can be raised. Question number 2. Describe one way you'll take to improve the security of a file, or data on a network that contains sensitive information in JN0362. Your answer is. Various constraints can be applied to such data or files. For example, only a small number of people, not all of them, may have access to the same. Question number 3. What does the term clustering support mean, and what does it imply in JN0362? Your answer is. In networking, clustering allows an operating system to support many node servers. This is a type of emergency operator who ensures that all nodes are operational during a critical circumstance, while also preventing power outages. Question number 4. Can you explain why a server is required for controlling other devices in JN0362? Your answer is. No, any network type can be established without the use of a server. A peer-to-peer -peer model device is a sort of networking system. As we all know, each networking node serves as either a client or a server. The main benefit of employing this approach is that if one networking node fails, it does not affect the other nodes, allowing for ongoing operations. Question number 5. What web browsers, plugins, and operating systems does the Juno's Space UI support? Your answer is. Users can utilize a web browser and plugins to access the Juno's Space version 17.2 user interface, which is independent of OS systems. There are two types of web browsers available in the Juno's Space UI. 1. Version 45 of Mozilla Firefox. 2. Internet Explorer 11 and other browsers. Question number 6. What is the recommended display resolution for using the Juno's Space UI in JN0362? Your answer is. The Juno's Space user interface will be tailored for displays with a resolution of up to 1280 by 1024 pixels. If your screen resolution is low, the entire Juno's Space UI will not display within the internet browser page, and scroll bars will not appear. Question number 7. Mention the Juno's Space UI's default username and password. Your answer is. The default login and password are Super and Juniper123 respectively. This default username has comprehensive access to user interface functionality details, as well as system administrator credentials. Question number 8. Why is network security important? How can this be accomplished? Your answer is. A network, of course, comprises the user's personal information or something else that is highly sensitive to the organizations concerned. Hackers can make a variety of unlawful attempts to steal such information. For example, a company's future plans can be leaked to competitors, who can take use of the information ahead of time. As a result, network security is critical. This can be accomplished by the use of a network firewall, antivirus software, data limitations, and a variety of other methods. Question number 9. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using proxy servers in a network? Your answer is. Proxy servers, on the other hand, are the most important contributors to security. External users may try to access data on a network node. Because it reflects an erroneous IP address, the proxy server prevents them from tracing the exact location of a node. Without knowing the IP address, it is exceedingly difficult for any user to access data. As a result, it contributes to network security. This method can also be used to hide a node from a network. Question number 10. What distinguishes nodes or devices in a network as distinct from one another? Your answer is. Each node or device in a network has a numerical networking address known as an IP address. The IP address offers all of this information about a network node or device. The IP address is unique and cannot be shared by two nodes on the same network. It contains all of the node's details, 
such as its location, registered users, and so on. Question number 11, why is network security important? How can this be accomplished? Your answer is, a network, of course, comprises the user's personal information or something else that is highly sensitive to the organizations concerned. Hackers can make a variety of unlawful attempts to steal such information. For example, a company's future plans can be leaked to competitors, who can take use of the information ahead of time. As a result, network security is critical. This can be accomplished by the use of a network firewall, antivirus software, data limitations, and a variety of other methods. Question number 12, what is the problem of network crosstalk and how may it be avoided? Your answer is, crosstalk occurs when a transmission is subjected to electromagnetic interference. It has the ability to set a limit or have a significant impact on data transfer. The cables used are insulated to avoid this occurrence. The shield is basically a cover for the cable that prevents it from encountering this issue. Crosstalk usually manifests itself during the transmission of voice signals. Question number 13. Can a public network be connected to a private network? Your answer is. Yes, it is feasible, and in most cases, the default gateway protocol is used. It is quite typical to link these two networks together. Private networks, often known as intranets, are used in situations when extra security and speed are necessary. Question number 14. What is a MAC address table, and how does a switch create one? Your answer is. The switch uses an address table called the MAC address table or CAM table to efficiently exchange frames between LAN ports, content addressable memory table. When the switch receives a frame, the source MAC address, as well as the port of arrival, VLAN, and timestamp, are learned and entered in the CAM table. The MAC address table is dynamically built by the switch using the source MAC address of the frames received. The switch then uses this table to identify where traffic on a LAN should be sent. Question number 15. What is the process by which a switch performs the forwarding function? Your answer is. When a Layer 2 Ethernet frame arrives at a switch port, it is read not only the source MAC address as part of the learning function, but also the destination MAC address as part of the forwarding function. The destination MAC address is needed to figure out which port the destination device is connected to. When the switch finds the target MAC address in the MAC address table, it forwards the Ethernet frame to the MAC address's matching port. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.